What really distinguishes The League of Gentlemen from other caper films is its style. Despite being in existential and film noir territory, the audience is never in any doubt that this is an intriguing and engaging piece of entertainment. It is written and made with a lightness of touch which lends charm, and it is peopled by sympathetic if deeply flawed characters who ensure audience empathy and even complicity. After some 25 years of faithful, dutiful and unblemished service in the British Army, Lieutenant Colonel Hyde is somewhat unceremoniously made redundant, and this unleashes a tidal wave of disillusion, bitterness and resentment. Feeling not just unappreciated, but betrayed by the very establishment he served and protected all these years, he doubts and rejects the moral code by which he has lived and worked. And Hyde decides to plan and execute a daring bank robbery with his customary military precision. This outrageously self-serving and uncharacteristic act will not only fill his coffers, but will constitute his revenge on an establishment that has disrespected him and turned its back on him. This transformation could have been depicted in an intense and introverted manner, focusing on Hyde's deteriorating mental health, etc. But instead we are presented with a positive and confident outlook, honed by a determination to see his plan through. We see he is pained and wounded by the way he has been treated, but he has channeled his feelings into a plan for amoral revenge, and because we understand the injustice of his situation, admire his spirit, and may even sympathise with him, we are happy to go along with him and his plan. To bring his plan to fruition, Hyde enlists the aid of seven former army officers, chosen with great care and attention to detail, whose skills and training will contribute to the success of the mission. Of course, they all have at least one other thing in common, apart from their military background. They are all crooks to one degree or another. We are shown a series of vignettes which indicate that each gentleman is struggling with his circumstances and each has a reason to seek change or escape his present situation. Again, each man's tale is potentially gloomy, but melancholy is avoided in favour of a reasonably positive attitude, especially as Hyde offers them a path to financial independence and freedom. We learn more about their dubious backgrounds at the first meeting arranged by Hyde at the Café Royal. It is clear we are not dealing with murderers or criminal masterminds, but rather a group of guys who, by and large, simply refuse to accept restrictions imposed by social propriety, customs and laws, as they try to make their way in life. They may even be regarded as nice guys capable of loyalty and hard work, if the situation benefits them, but they appear to have lost their moral compass, and indeed they may have lost much direction and control of their lives, leaving them rather downtrodden and perhaps demoralised, a position they seem to have more or less accepted as they show little ambition or spirit. However, Hyde provides stimulus, purpose and a sense of self-worth when he invites them to join him in his daring bank raid. Hyde offers leadership, spirit and direction, qualities the other gentlemen are lacking, while the group offers Hyde hope, purpose and a chance of achieving vengeful satisfaction. Each man gains from his participation, and not just financially making a valued contribution to their common objective within a framework of discipline and careful planning brings out the best in each, and they develop considerable camaraderie and fraternity, which may even be said to extend to the audience as we feel complicit in their scheme. I would point out that this is a format and strategy used most effectively in later films such as Ocean's Eleven, The Dirty Dozen and The Italian Job, but their origins seem to lie in this much more modest British film. Scenes of practice and preparation emphasise the care and precision with which the operation is mounted, but these scenes also serve to underline the fraternity and sense of common purpose of our gentlemen. They also provide amusement, entertainment and a sense of connivance and even conspiracy for the audience. We know that what they are doing is wrong, but we have shared their at times affecting, morally ambiguous and emotionally challenging background stories, and we have witnessed their efforts and burgeoning fellowship with the result we are actually rooting for them as they swing into relatively non-violent action. If an acceptable definition of film noir is one that invites the audience to challenge the traditional and accepted perception of morality, I can't help but feel this film fits the bill despite its positive and amusing style, and, as I suggested at the beginning, its style is what sets it apart. Amusing and lightly told film noir are rare and hard to achieve, and I find their combination of light comedy and moral challenge quite irresistibly entertaining. In the end, 
we are somewhat disappointed and saddened when our gentlemen are defeated by chance and the innocent actions of a child, the true and quite unpredictable enemies of professional planning. All in all, this is a playful, amusing and thoroughly engaging piece of knowing entertainment in which the characters are endowed with sufficient individuality, personality and flaws to make them dubious and intriguing, yet touching and involving at the same time. Add to this a deft humour and self-awareness, and you come up with an engaging confection intelligently and skillfully crafted for our enjoyment. My thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find it of some value.